to Rehana's Cuisines. Today, Sumaya is recording us, so the credit goes to Sumaya. Thank you, Sumaya. Um, today, we're going to be making a traditional cookie. It's an Indian cookie. It's a traditional cookie. Um, and the only way that you can tell that, and we're making naan katais. Naan katais are a traditional Indian cookie with a um, color dot on it, just like just like that, just looks like a dot like that. We're gonna be using this green color. Now, you don't have to use the green color. You can use any color you like. Sumaya so said, mom use green, so we're using green. And I actually wanted to make some really nice naan katais and I wanted to use mini M&Ms. But guess what, I bought the mini M&Ms and somebody in the house finished them. So we don't have any mini M&Ms in the house. So anyways, I have to stick with my green coloring. So let's get started. Very, very simple, simple recipe. Um, again, this uh, video credit uh, recipe credit goes to my mother-in-law, Nazma Bai Mula. Um, she makes the best naan katais ever. And I've tried a lot of naan katais out there but I'm seriously hooked to hers. They're really, really good. So for the recipe, thank you, mom. For the recipe, we're gonna be using one cup of unsalted butter. This is very important, use unsalted. If you use salted, your cookies are gonna get very salty. We're gonna use one cup of sugar. Now, um, you can adjust that to your taste. These won't be very, very sweet, and we like them not very sweet, so I, you know, we that's her measurement, one cup of sugar one cup one fourth cup of canola oil two eggs we're gonna be using some cardamom powder now um she uses it sometimes doesn't use it at other times so it's really really up to you i love this the the uh, taste and uh, smell of the cardamom powder so i'm gonna be adding that in there we're also gonna be using three teaspoons of baking powder and four cups of white flour or all-purpose flour um, and then you're gonna need any color that you want to use. So now this recipe mom had given me and I had tried this at home using this recipe and it didn't turn out anything like hers. So I decided to go um, to her house so I can really see exactly how she makes it. And a um, couple of things that she pointed out was that the butter has to be really, really soft, not melted. If, you, if the butter is going to be melted, the consistency of the nankata is going to be completely off. So make sure that it's really nice and um, soft. Um, so, you know, you, we're just going to mix this. And then we're also going to be adding our one cup of sugar in here. Now, when I made it, I had made it, I had used a mixer and did it my way. And like I said, they did not turn out anything like hers. Now, this recipe we are making, this is completely her method. She doesn't use a mixer. She uses, excuse me, she uses her hand so um, to mix all the ingredients. So I'm going to do it exactly the way she does it because I don't want to improvise or I don't want to do anything so um, to um, ruin or um, have a different texture to these nankatais. So, um, oven is preheating at 350 degrees. We're going to stick this in the oven for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, we're going to shut the oven off, leave the nankatais in the oven for another 15 minutes. Um, and then when we take them out, they're going to be a little soft, but as they cool, they're going to get really nice and crispy. So I made some for my Gujarati uh, video and I've got some in the oven right now. They're at about um, they're at about 20 minutes left, but I can give you a peek of what they look like. I'm just gonna quickly open the door and then shut it up. So Smiley, you wanna go and just look. So this is what they're gonna look like. Um, so we're gonna quickly close it because I don't wanna um, have the temperature lower in there so just to give you a peek so that that video i just did for my directly friends so there is a video out there if you're looking for um don't understand english and you're looking for the gujarati video it's out there so just mixed it really well with my hand just creamed it really nice with my hand nothing that you can't do without a mixer okay so now in goes our oil 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the eggs and then what I want to do is I want to break the egg one by one just to make sure that they're not bad because if they're if one of them is bad and I'm going to break them right in here then my whole mixture is going to go bad so I like to break them in a bowl there you go just stick that in here okay now we're just going to go ahead and mix it really gently and she didn't use a whisk, she used a spatula. So I'm telling you, I'm doing it exactly down to the T. I'm not changing this recipe up because I got burned twice. I tried this recipe without looking at how she did it twice. And the, I mean, they came out, they were edible, but they were nothing like hers. So that's why I'm doing exactly like the way she does it. And that's why this is the time that I really appreciated you know, um, the YouTube videos that I make, you know, it really gives you, it shows you exactly the consistency of the items or the, the, what the product has to be. So you can have a recipe book and open it up and do it, but sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, I've done recipes using recipe books, but times like this, I really had to see her show me how she did it. So see, I just used my hand, I just beat it until, beat it until it was really nice and fluffy. Now I'm just gonna put that on the side for just a minute. I'm gonna take my baking powder, and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my flour. So we're just gonna take one teaspoon, um, two teaspoons and three teaspoons leveled of baking powder okay and I'll just use this to mix it up and we're just gonna mix this up okay just like so okay perfect now I'm gonna take the cardamom which is very very optional just gonna sprinkle some cardamom in here, very optional. Mix that up really well. Again, she mixes also the dough with her hand, so again, I'm just gonna do exactly the way she does it. So we're gonna put in half of our flour mixture. Okay, leave the other half in there for now. We're gonna start mixing it until until I need to put in my put my hands in, and I don't know if I mentioned, but this traditional cookie without the dot, even if you make it just round, and if the same batter you use, but it will not be named. It won't be called nankatai. Nobody will recognize it as nankatai just because you know that's how the dot recognizes it for the name. So, um, all right. It's coming along really well. And now I think I need to get my gloves so I can start mixing in the second half of the flour. Okay, so I don't know when people say you don't get a workout in the kitchen, you do, seriously. Okay, let me just grab my gloves real quick. And the non kadais that are baking in the oven, Oh, they smell divine. Smells so good in here. I just wish you guys could all smell it. Sumaya can smell it, and I'm sure you guys heard that too. So, here we go. She's giggling in the back. All right, so here we go. Now we're just going to use, you know, just my hands, and we're just going to, like, mix this together. Woo! Be a good idea to mix it in the bowl, bowl and not out. But oh well, okay. So you just wanna mix this, just like you're kneading a dough. Just wanna mix this really well, okay? And these, is, these are really good because they work out really well. You can make, you can get at least 45 out of these. Um, if you make them, you know, a little small. But if they're, if they're gonna be bigger, then you probably will get about 35 of them out. So it really depends on how big you want these cookies. Now, um, the first recipe, the first batch that I did, 
um, I think we got we got 45 exactly 45 out from um, the batch the first batch that I made and I'm sure I'll be able to get the same amount from this batch so you can you know you can see that you can get a good quantity out of them so if you're planning to do like you know an office party type of thing or if you're trying to take it to um, a party or, or um, have school friends over or whatever this is really nice because you know one batch makes 45 and really you can even make the dots on there and dip it in chocolate if you like so you really these are versatile you can really do whatever you want with this because the taste of these non katais are so awesome and they're so nice and crispy okay so I got my batter done or I should say I got my dough done so you see how the consistency is um, not uh, soft enough to stick onto my gloves so that's perfect but um, soft enough where um, you know it's not like a dough that's a firm dough it's a nice soft dough so I'm gonna quickly get this stuff out of the way here and then what you want to do is you just want to start rolling these so we've got our dough ready here and what I'm doing is I'm just taking just a little bit you can decide whether how big or small you want to make your non-katais um, I don't like them very big I like them pretty small um, just because I think small looks cuter I, I, that's just per personal preference again so I'm just gonna roll these and with this recipe you should be able to get out between 45 to 50 depending on um, how big you're gonna make them now if you're gonna be like my mom my mom usually makes really big ones you're probably gonna get 25 out of the hers if she were gonna um, fold these. So mine are pretty small. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, keep on rolling these. And then what you want to do is you could either use your finger to do these green um, little markings on them. And that's why they're called non -cutis. This is the traditional way that non are made. The only way that you can tell that this is non is if you have a color dot on it. So even if we did this non recipe and have them not do anything with it, you, we don't call them non just because it doesn't have the traditional little thing on it. So you can either use your finger or what you can do is first go ahead and make those indentations in here. Just little markings so the color kind of stays inside. Then just take something and just use it as um, a little, like a stamp. And... You can really use your imagination to find something that works for you. This chopstick works for me. Doesn't get color on my gloves because if I want to go back and start rolling these, then I really don't have to go and run and wash my hands and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, finish all these up, stick them in the uh, oven. Again, they go in 350 degrees for 30 minutes. We're going to leave them in there. After 30 minutes, we're going to go ahead and turn the oven off and leave it in there for another 15 minutes. When we take them out, they're going to be very soft. So we're going to leave them, um, let them do their thing, cool down a little bit. And as they cool, they're going to get really nice and crispy. So I'm going to see you back here in about 30 minutes. We'll check up on these and then um, wait another 15 minutes before I do my taste test. So. So I've got my oven beeping at me. We we have the non katais in there for 35 minutes and they smell amazing. So I'm going to go ahead, open it up so you guys can see. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and grab my um, warmer here. So you can see that these look really, really good. In fact, I don't know if you can see, but you know, the bottom has already started browning a little bit, which is just perfect. And so um, I'm just gonna go ahead close this up I'm gonna go ahead turn my oven to off and let the non katais still be in there for another 15 minutes when we come back I'm gonna do a taste test of these crispy non katais so I'll see you here I'll see you back here in about 15 minutes the non katais are all done um, the 15 minutes are up and if you see here um, I don't know if you noticed from the first um, time when I showed you that they were done, um, they were not as 
um, almond colored. They were pretty white. And by leaving them inside, they kind of got a really nice almond color all around. And um, so what you wanna do next is just take them out and start uh, putting them on a cookie sheet so that they don't sweat. If the non cutize sweat or any cookie that sweats, they're gonna become softer. So you really want these to uh, be on a cookie rack, or oh, I mean, sorry, uh, a drying rack or something, or uh, I'm really, really losing my mind today. Um, you know, it's something that is going to give the air from the bottom so it doesn't sweat. So I'm gonna give it another 15, 20 minutes um, until they cool down. When we come back after that, I'm gonna break one open and um, let you hear the crisp in the nankatais. Our nankatais are done. They smell amazing. The whole house has this really great baking aroma going on. And I'm dying to get into this because I really wanna know if I have perfected this recipe um, as my as my mother-in-law makes it. So Sumaya here, is going to do a taste test and Sumaya, you let everybody know if it tastes like daddy's or not. Okay. okay? All right, you want a tiny one, the small piece that I made for you? Go ahead. Right there, I made that little one for you. Right. I know, isn't it cute? It's the same, it's very good. Very good? Okay. So, I guess let me take a bite from here. Mm. And you can see that the bottom has browned just a little bit. They're crispy. And they're not melt in the mouth because these are not supposed to be melt in the mouth. But they're just crispy. And that cardamom smell, the cardamom taste is just coming through. And I'm telling you, with a cup of masala chai, it's awesome. So please give this a try. Um, leave me some comments. I'm on Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Instagram, Pinterest, um, and the list goes on. So, any comments? Am I missing anything? YouTube. Oh, yeah, and I'm on YouTube because you're watching YouTube. Duh. <laughs> okay, so um, please leave me some comments. Let me know how they turned out for you. Um, until next time, please join me here with another great video. See you then, friends.